Hello everyone and welcome back to the C++ 3D game tutorial series. In this 40 second video tutorial we will see how to implement collision detection. In particular we will see how to retrieve and use data from the IDMAP, how to design and implement a simple physics engine and in the end how to check eventual intersections between the player and the terrain colliders in order to collide and walk over the surface of our terrain. As always, we will face three main parts. Requirements, design and implementation of all the necessary things to implement the collision detection. So let's start with the requirements. We need a C++ IDE, in this series we use Visual Studio 2019 Community. The target platform is Windows, the target graphics API is DirectX 11, and last but not least, a bit of knowledge of C++ programming language is recommended. Now we can start the design part. In this tutorial we will finally face the implementation of collision detection. This is an extremely important part of the game since it allows the developer to respond to specific collision events and so to implement particular game mechanics. For example, if the player collides with a coin, we can detect that collision and respond consequently in any way we want. We can implement collision detection in three main steps. The first step consists in retrieving the data from the IDMAP. Those data are nothing but the various heights of the terrain. As first thing, we retrieve the array of pixels of the map. This part can be easily accomplished by using the DirectX text library. Then we have to pick the color of a specific pixel of the map by providing a numeric index that can be computed by using a texture coordinate through the formula shown on the screen. Once we are able to retrieve the various heights, we can start to design and implement a simple physics engine. In particular, in this tutorial, we will see how to process the collisions between all the entities. And, most of all, we will notify collision events to the user by adding a suitable callback method in the entity class, called onCollision. This callback method will be one of the most important parts of the engine, since it will allow us to implement custom behaviors, game mechanics, and so on. Last but not least, in this tutorial we will focus mainly in the detection of collisions between the player and the terrain colliders. In particular, we will see how to implement a simple algorithm to detect collisions based on player movements. In the end, we should obtain this final result. If you have questions, doubts or comments about this topic, don't hesitate to leave them in the comment section of this video or in the Discord server. The link to the Discord server is available in the video description. Also, if you find these tutorials helpful, please consider to support the development on Patreon. Every single contribution makes the difference, regardless the amount. Very well, we have gathered all the necessary information to start the implementation. As first thing, let's go to the terrain component header file and let's start to retrieve height data from the height map. Let's start by implementing the get height from word point method. This method should allow us to retrieve the height of the terrain located at a specific point of the world. In order to do that, let's start to convert the word position we pass as parameter in texture coordinate. In this way, we can identify and retrieve the correspondent pixel from the height map.
Once we have the texture coordinate stored in the temp point vector, we have to find a way to get the actual pixel from the height map. To do that, let's implement a lambda function called get pixel from text chord. And let's add the texture coordinate as input parameter. As first thing, we have to retrieve the array of pixels of the height map. So, let's go to the Texture 2D class and let's add the so called get pixels method. Let's also add a DirectX Scratch Image attribute. We have used this object previously inside the Texture 2D constructor, but now, since we need to retrieve the data of the image stored inside it, we have to add it as attribute of the Texture 2D class. Once we have replaced all the image data references, let's retrieve the array of pixels. Let's also add a further method called get bits per pixel, for which we provide the number of bits per pixel of this particular image. Let's turn back to the terrain component and let's retrieve the pixels array and the bytes per pixel.
As we have already seen in the introduction, we have to convert the texture coordinate in the pixel's array index. Very well, at this point let's get the color of the pixel, in this case it's a single channel color, so we deal with only one value, and let's divide it by 255, in this way we get a value between 0 and 1. Now we have to apply a filter to the height values in such a way to have a final value that changes smoothly. This will allow us to have a smooth movement during the collision between the terrain and the camera. This is a simple blur filter that consists to get four neighbor pixels and interpolate them together. At this point we have to linear interpolate the various values. Let's add a math header file in the math folder and let's add a math class. At this point, let's start to add a static LARP method. The next thing to do is to interpolate between the values along the x-axis. And finally, the two values obtained previously are again interpolated along the y-axis. 
In this way, we are able to get the final result. Last but not least, let's take the i value between 0 and 1 and let's multiply it by the current scale along the y axis. So far, so good. Let's go to my game class and let's see if get height from what point works by providing the player position and by showing the returned height on the screen. And it works! The next thing to do is to implement a simple physics engine. We will add methods like add component, remove component, update, and so on. This little engine will process collisions between the various physics components added to the game world. Today, in particular, we will support the collisions between terrain component and a particular collider called player controller component.
let's instantiate and initialize the physics engine inside the game class. Obviously, as we have seen in the previous tutorials, let's pay attention to the order in which we declare the unique pointers, since it defines the order in which the pointers are deallocated. So, let's deallocate it after the graphics engine and let's initialize it before the graphics engine. Very well, let's call the update method of physics engine before the rendering of the graphics. Since physics engine will take control over the positions of the various entities and so it should be processed before the entities are rendered on the screen. What's next? Well, we have to finally implement the so-called player controller component. This kind of component will provide useful data to the physics engine related to the player, like height, movement, data, and so on. In this way, the physics engine will be able to detect the collisions properly. Let's implement player controller component in the same way we have already done with the other components.
At this point, we need only three attributes. The height of the player, a unit vector direction of the movement, and the amount of distance between the current position and the next one. As usual, let's add all the setter and getter methods. Let's also add an important method called move that, as the name suggests, moves the entity of a specific amount of space along a specific direction. The next thing to do is to finally implement the update method of the physics engine. Here we have to check each entity against all the other entities. There are more optimized and efficient ways to handle this situation, but for now let's adopt a simple approach in which we use two nested loops.
If we are dealing with the terrain and the player controller, let's process the coll this collision in a specific way. So let's add a private method called process terrain player collision and let's handle this collision inside it. In order to check if there is a collision between the terrain and the player, we have to check if there is any intersection between the two. Since we are dealing with an intersection between a point, that is the player position provided by the player controller component, and the height data provided instead by the height map of the terrain component, let's add an intersect method in the terrain component that returns two values, a boolean result and the point in which there is the intersection. In this method, let's implement a simple algorithm that acts in this way. Starting from the initial position, we move along the provided direction for a certain distance. In order to check if there is an intersection between the initial position or the current player position and the final position or the position in which the player will be placed at the end of the movement, we define a little step where a step is nothing more than the distance divided by a factor, in this case by 10. And step by step, we move the current position from the initial position to the final position. And each time we check if there is the intersection. If we find the intersection, we return the intersection point, otherwise we return false.
So far so good, let's turn back to the physics engine and in the process terrain player collision method let's call the intersect method. If we find an intersection, we place the entity at the return intersection point. And, as we have seen in the introduction, we notify the user about the collision. We can do that by adding a callback method called onCollision inside the entity class. Let's finalize the update method.
In the end, let's go to the player class and let's add the player controller component. Let's improve the computation of the player movement direction. And in the end, let's call the move method. Let's not forget to add the terrain component in the physics engine. Let's see if it works. It works. That's all for now folks, today we have seen how to implement a basic collision detection. I hope you enjoyed this video, see you soon, thanks for watching.